नमो भक्ति बिनो नाया सचिद नंद नमने गोर शक्ति स्वरूप आया रूप नोगा दराये सो श्रील भक्ति बिनो ताकुर इस डिस्क्राइब्ड इन हिस प्रणाम मंत्रा दैट ही इस एम्पावर्ड विद द एनर्जी ऑफ श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु एंड ही इस स्ट्रिक्ट फॉलोअर ऑफ श्रील रूप गोस्वामी Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is described by our founder Acharya, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, as being the pioneer of spreading Krishna consciousness in the Western world. That was in the year 1896, which was the year of the birth of Srila Prabhupada. Our founder Acharya was born in 1896. And that same year, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was sending books about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the universities in Canada and in the USA because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had the vision. He was a visionary and he made predictions that in the future there will be devotees all over the planet. And people of all different races and nationalities and colors, they will all come together to chant the holy name of Lord Goranga. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur envisioned this a hundred years more ago. We could hardly imagine. So he was a very... Uh, visionary person, not only did he foresee that people from different parts of the world would come to Mayapur, but he envisioned that in the future there would be a big temple also in Mayapur. That was Srila Bhaktivinoda's vision, that in the future there will be a very wonderful temple established there in Navadvip Dham. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is described as being the seventh Goswami. He was not uh, a, a sannyasi. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a grihastha. And his first wife died, so he took a second wife. And they had 13 children. And Bhakti Siddhanta Tarasati or Bhimal Prasad, he was like the fourth son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So why did Bhaktivinoda Thakur have to have so many children? He wanted them to help him to spread the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he trained them from childhood how to be great devotees. He taught them everything just like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was taught as a young child, he was, he'd memorized all the Bhagavad Gita, all the verses, and then his father trained him in book production. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote many books. Actually, before he took up the preaching of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he spent a lot of time in scholarship because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur grew up in what the, the late 19th century. So at that time, India was under the British rule. And so if the British were trying to encourage people away from their Vedic culture and to take up the Western culture and bring them to Christianity and things like this, make them more materialistic and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur he grew up in that kind of era so he was learned in languages and he wrote books it's not only in Bengali and actually he was there also in Orissa he was working in the government service and he was involved in the court affairs and he was at one point in charge of the temple at Jagannath Puri. And at that time there was a very notorious yogi who was claiming that he was an in 
incarnation of Vishnu. And this yogi had corrupted many innocent women and it was misleading a lot of people. So the British government did not know how to deal with him. And the only thing they could think to do was to request Kedarnath Datta, who is actually Bhaktivinoda Thakur. They requested him, you do something about this man. Get him, find out what he's doing wrong and have him arrested. So it was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who took him to task, even at the risk of his own life because this yogi was very powerful and he threatened to do great harm to Srila Bhaktivinoda and all of his family. But Bhaktivinoda persisted. He, he was very determined to defeat all of these corrupt teachers who were misleading the people and who were claiming to be incarnations of God. So that yogi was eventually sentenced to hard labor in prison and he ended up committing suicide in the prison. So everyone understood he was actually an imposter, he wasn't a genuine incarnation. Then Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur de desired to establish the proper birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he understood it could not be in Navadvi town because it, it's described in the books like Chaitanya Bhagwat that the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was near to the Chankazi. And so Chankazi Samadhi is one of the established places there in the, ta in the town of Mayapur. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted to find out where is actually the birth site of, of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was living at Swarup Ganji. We went to his house. You will remember Sarabi Kunj. First at Sarabi Kunj, Srila Bhaktivinoda lived there. And then later on he moved around the corner to his house where his, actually his samadhi is there, just around the corner. And while he was on the roof, he could see some effulgence over in Mayapur. And then he went over there and he investigated and he found many tulsis were growing there. And then more investigation and they discovered even uh, Vishnu Murti there. And this Vishnu Murti was confirmed to be the worshipable deity of Jagannath Mishra. So in this way Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur began the actual birth site of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Previously people all thought that the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Navadvi, but it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur who established the birthplace over in Mayapur. And then later on it was his son Bhaktivedanta Sarasati who developed it and brought more people out there. And gradually people began to accept that the actual birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Mayapur. So this was something of the legacy of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur labored intensely to spread Krishna consciousness. He wrote so many wonderful books and songs, poems. We've just been singing some of his songs. Every day we sing many songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. We sing the Gora Arti every evening. We sing Jai Radha Madhava every time before class. There are so many ones we were singing in the morning when you go on Parikram, we often sing Vibhavari Shesha and Jeev Jagor and Udila Aruna. All of these songs are written by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He labored. It's not so easy thing to write these songs and to write the books. He worked very hard and very intensely. He hardly slept. Although he was a married man with many children and with government service, but he still found time to chant the holy name and to write so many books and wonderful songs, all for our benefit. We are so fortunate. We are so much indebted to him. He has given us so much. 
So this is actually his birthplace and his youngest son was called Lalit Prasad. Lalit Prasad used to live here and Prabhupada came here to meet Lalit Prasad. Our own Srila Prabhupada came here to meet him. At one point there was the devotees had met Lalit Prasad and Lalit Prasad had said he'd got some of the writings of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur which had not been published. So Srila Prabhupada was interested that, you know, maybe you like to give them to us and we can publish them in our BBT with Paris. So Prabhupada came and spoke to him anyway for some time and there was some discussion but nothing ever happened. Lalit Prasad himself was uh, a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And so different brothers, you know, they have different opinions. They say that actually what Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was teaching, that was not really what Bhaktivinoda wanted. You know, you have to follow me, I'll teach you what really Bhaktivinoda wanted. Like that, there's, it's always difficult, different people have their own ideas, they want their own ways. So nothing really happened. But when Bhaktivinoda Thakur was here, you can see inside there's not, uh, 12 Shiva Lingas, right? 12 Shiva Lingas. And they used to be worshipped in the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. They were worshipped, but the worship was stopped by this youngest son, this Lalit Prasad. Why did he stop the worship? It, it was done by his grandparents, not Bhaktivinoda. Mm, it was done by his grandparents. Yeah, they set up the worship. They, they, they established the lingo. Yeah, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was born in a family of great wealth. His maternal grandfather was fabulously wealthy. And so you can see this is a big place. There's quite a big area. And... Uh, it, it must be very valuable property. So they were living here for some time. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was born in that kind of family and had very good education. He studied all different religions and he concluded that the highest philosophy, the greatest knowledge was there in the teachings of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And he had great difficulty in his time to find a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Could not find a copy. It took him a long time to locate one copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. But he was very happy to find it. And when he did find it, he wrote also commentary on Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Chaitanya Charitamrita, that's like the postgraduate study of Srimad. Bhagavatam. I told Krishna Prabhu was just telling me today while we were coming here, he said that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that he did not really understand Srimad Bhagavatam until he read the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Chaitanya Charitamrita, very important. We were talking about Jiva Goswami, remember how he sent Naradam and uh, uh, Srinivas with the books and the books had you know all these things like the conversations between Ramananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya which are there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita so Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted these, these kind of books it's sometimes in course of time these things are lost they're very very valuable it's very important to hear from the past acharyas and to know what their teachings are. Nowadays, of course, we do have a library there in Calcutta. They have the Bhaktivedanta Research Library and they have a lot of ancient manuscripts there. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he really, really endeavored. And his program also, he was going preaching, he wrote also the, he organized the, the Nam Hatha preaching, which was originally from Lord Nityananda. Nam Hatha, the marketplace of the holy name. Srila Bhaktivinoda 
uh, developed it, how it should be structured and what should be the different arrangements, how many people should be in a group and when you should break into another group. So Srila Bhaktivin Nath Thakur designed all that structure and he wrote about it. And he also went out preaching. And his program was just like our program. We follow him. He would do kirtan, then he'd give a class, and then prasadam. So his program, we're just following whatever Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave us. It's all his. We are just simply trying to follow in his footsteps. So we're so much indebted to him. Later on, in his while well, he was living in Mayapur there for a long time, then later on he finally at the end of his life he moved over to Jagannath Puri. And he was actually saying that if you can get a horse, put me on the horse and take me for preaching. He wanted to go out and preach. Even though he could not walk, he wanted to go out for preaching. He had that desire. So we're so much indebted to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and we've come here to this place to show him all devotees from different countries how they're coming here to get his blessings and to ask him to please empower us that we can go on and continue to distribute the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the chanting of the holy names. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, that just I was thinking there about the, the, the uh, he had to, you know, what we take, well, what we so much take for granted, like Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's just in all of our temple rooms. I mean, you just send anyone go to Chaitanya Charitamrita, they'll go and get one. And Thakur Bhaktivinoda, he had to, he had to seek and and and, and uh, endeavor so hard just to find the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now, if he had not have made that endeavor, it, it may have just become lost, some obscure scripture, you know, in some archive somewhere, and, no, and the world would never have known the, the, the extent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, which are in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, apart from the Chaitanya Charitamrita and some other, other Vrindavan Das Thakur, but the, the, the Mahaprabhu's teachings was not understood by, by, by society, by, by, by humanity. They were considered the Sahajiyas, they were considered the, the rejects of society beyond the Banasram because they didn't understand the teachings of Chaitanya Mahabhubhu. And the teachings of Chaitanya Mahabhubhu is in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's the most important theological <coughs> treatise in humanity. Humanity doesn't know that now. The mission of Thakur Bhaktivinoda is to make it known to humanity that the Chaitanya Charitamrita is the deepest theological uh, work in all of humanity and he's gone that's our mission that's our preaching mission and we, we have a long way to go we have a long way to go people still don't, do not understand that the science of god that mahaprabhu gained came appeared to give to humanity in chaitanya charitamrita taku bhaktivinoda has had he had rescued that from complete obscurity what a contribution for humanity what an honor it is to be able to be in his sampradaya and be in this mission the greatest mission for for all of humanity, Prabhupada explained that history will, will understand that, that, that this movement saved the world in its darkest hour. And at the time of Thakur Bhaktivinoda, that this movement was non-existent. He saved this movement. We know, like, we just take it for granted. It's gone everywhere. We drive up the highway, we pull in, as it's gone happy poor. We lay out, we take the shot, ah, joy, it's gone, joy, Prabhupada, we go. It's gone. They were everywhere. The same sign, the Lord is he's gone. So easy for us. But he was alone. There was no other Vaishnavas. This whole movement was just resting in his heart. He was alone. And therefore he had Shanak Shashi Thakur, who further gave the, who established the institute and, and was criticized. But he instituted preaching, organized preaching. He's the seed of our movement, the father of our movement. Thakur Bhaktivinoda Ki. And this is most auspicious Janmastan. What a special place. It's like when it's like a transcendental realm. Rajabhumi, Rajabhumi Prakas, what a great soul appeared here in, in, in Godadesh, surrounded by so many Tirtashtan. We, we, we went to Shantipur, we went to, uh, to Pulia, Advaita Charja, 
uh, uh, Lila Stan, Mahaprabhu praying for Pulia, uh, Thakur, Thakur Haridas, Bhajan Stan. He, he appeared in this sanctified place, and it's such a special place, extraordinary estate. Mahaprabhu Bhakti Manod Ki. Mindful tourism ki. Giving us such treasures. Yeah, I just wanted to add also that Bhaktivinoda Thakur was an in, initiated by Bipin Bihari Goswami. But in our parampara, when we put the pictures on the altar, we show Jagannath Das Babaji and then Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So this was the this was arranged by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. He instructed like this. Parampara should be like this to show also that dik diksha is not as important as shiksha. That uh, Jagannath Das Babaji was like shiksha, giving shiksha to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but his actual diksha guru was Bipin Bihari Goswami. But he, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, always had the greatest respect for his diksha guru. It didn't mean that he didn't respect his Diksha Guru. It was just decided that the Parampara should be like that. That the prominent Acharya, the person who had contributed more to the development of the Parampara, was Jagannath Das Babaji. Another point about Bhaktivinoda Thakur was that he was preaching mostly in villages. More than a hundred years ago in India, most people lived in villages. It's only recently, with the industrialization, that people all come to the city. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching in the villages with Namhata, and then later on it was Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati who preached in the town, and he established the Gaudiya Math with 64 centers around India. And then after Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, then we have our own Bhaktivinanta Swami Prabhupada, who preached all over the world and brought Lord Chaitanya's mission out of India to everyone around the planet. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur definitely envisioned that would happen in course of time. But in his time it was not so possible, not so easy thing to do, but certainly he knew that in the future there's going to be more and more devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the holy name would be chanted everywhere. So we have to pray to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, please bless us, please give us your mercy, help us to push on our preaching in these difficult times. Now the world is struggling wars in Russia and Ukraine, so many problems, we have the pandemic situation the last few years. We have to learn to adapt to all these different situations to develop and to continue to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. As Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati told Prabhupada, Krishna consciousness cannot wait for some political adjustment. We have to preach in every situation. We have to be able to distribute Krishna consciousness. You cannot just wait for things to change. You cannot make excuses. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Questions? Was the connection, the only link between Bhakti Nur Thakur and Krishna? Say it again. What's the question? Link between Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gorkishoda. The link? Well, Gorkishoda Das Babaji used to regularly go to visit Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his residence there at Swaruganj. And he used to hear Bhaktivinoda Thakur lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam. And he, you can see when you go to Bhaktivinoda Thakur Samadhi there at Swarup Ganj, there's also the, there's a Bhajan Kutir place of Gorkishor Das Babaji because he used to come and he'd stay there 
sometimes. He would stay there from time to time. And so later on, when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had to get initiation, Bhakti Vinod Thakur directed him. He said, you can take from Gorky Shodas Babaji that he's a very good person. He's, he's not a cheater and he's not corrupt. So he will be a, a he was illiterate, which was unusual because Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was so scholarly, but still spiritually he was highly analytic, very advanced. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur recommended Gorky Shodas Babaji to be the Diksha Guru for Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. So that's how Gorky Shodas Babaji is there in the Parampara. Gorky Shodas Babaji didn't have many disciples. I think that was the only one, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, of course, had many disciples. And one of them was Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Huh? He is Diksha Guru Maharaj. Who? Guru Maharaj. I think he wants to understand the relationship between Guru Kishore Das Babaji and Bhakti Vinod Thakur. In the parampara, basically. Well, I told her that Guru Kishore Das Babaji would go there and hear from him. That is taking shiksha. If you go and hear somebody preach, you're taking their shiksha. So that's the point. I explained that. Now, is this the place where the elephants, it talks about dead elephants? In the maternal home, Baba Bhattanadi had elephants. I assume that's here. You heard that? Yeah, I read that he had elephants. Well, I was, we had elephants. Maybe there are elephants wandering around in the in the in the wild elephants that they maintain here. You heard? Have you done it? I've heard of that. Read it in the book Seventh Goswami. There are elephants in, the, in this place. I can imagine it. I heard tigers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go together. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so we're done. Thank you.